So we're in this series called I'm In. Last week we talked about how we're all invaluable to the body of Christ. And now this is a great example of what Jan is. Jan is invested. And I'm not just talking about financially that she's put money in there, but she is invested. And what you're seeing is a return. Now, if you've done any investing at all, uh, when you invest, you, what do you want? You want a return, right? Uh, th- this past week, I, um, I'm walking out of these doors. I don't even know why I was in the building, but I was walking out of these doors and had a notification on my phone and a stock. I just recently purchased some, some Delta stock. I don't know why. It just seemed like a good purchase at the time. It immediately went down after I bought it. Isn't that always the case? Well, then, but as I'm walking out, I, I get a notification. It says your Delta stock is up 5%. I did the math in my head real quick. I'm like, man. That's great, you know, and then later that afternoon, I got another notification that another stock, I, don't judge me, but I do play around with crypto a little bit, it's nerve wracking, but anyway, I got a notification that my crypto was up 5%, no, it was down 5%, yeah, it was down, as a matter of fact, I got a notification this morning, it's down another 5%, matter of fact, stay out of crypto, don't mess with crypto, all right, think about this, 20 years ago, if you had $5,000 and you invested it in Amazon, how many of y'all used Amazon last week? <laughs> All of us. Yeah. 20 years ago, if you had invested 5000 in Amazon, you would have $2.4 million today. Did any of y'all do that? <laughs> All right, I was hoping to get lunch. All right. Listen, when you invest, here's the thing. When you invest, you always want to return. But here's the problem, though. We're not guaranteed to return. When you and I invest in stocks, uh, we're we're not always guaranteed to return. And for every story of of a great investment, there's there's other stories of of bad investments, the unsuccessful investments. The truth is this. We all want to invest wisely. Matter of fact, you've got in your lifetime, let's just say you've got an average of about 80 years. Man, you, you want to invest wisely in, in all areas of our life, but especially with, the, with our life. Jesus told a story, uh, told a parable um, on the importance of investing in, in Matthew 25. And this is not our scripture for the day, but you see where, where this rich landowner went away and he gave some talents, you know, to, to one uh, person. On, and he gave another talent to another person, another servant. And then he gave it some talents to another servant. And then he came back, and and two of them, they had invested it, and they had a return on the the talents. Well, the third one, he didn't even put it in the bank to gain interest, and all he did was just give the talents back to the landowner. And in the story, the landowner took the the talents of the one who did nothing with it and and gave it to the one who had the most. Man, we we don't want to be like that. Man, we want to invest wisely. Last week, we, we learned that we are invaluable to the body of Christ. And if we're invaluable, and I don't want you to hear this. Maybe today you walked in and, and you didn't feel that way. I, I want you to know something. Man, you're invaluable to the body of Christ. If you're a believer, I, I want to say this. Not only do you belong here, but you, your, your thoughts, the way God's crafted you, the, gay, the way God's wired you, man, you, you are needed here in the body of Christ. Matter of fact, more than needed, man, you're invaluable. You know why? Because there's not another person like you in the body of Christ. I do not want a church where everybody looks and acts and thinks like me. It would be such a boring church. And it'd be such a smaller church. No, man, you are invaluable for the way God has wired and gifted you. Listen, since you're invaluable, our our response should be this. Man, I want to invest in what God's doing. I want to invest in his kingdom. I want to invest in his church. And here's the reason we want to do that. We want to do that because Jesus, he's invested in us. I want you to think about this for a second. Just like you and I, we, we want to put our money investments where they're going to get a return. You, you, you probably did a little bit of research or, or whatever it was. and You decided, oh, I think this is a safe or this is going to be good. This will be a good investment. Jesus looks at you and I. And goes, you know, this is a good investment. This is my child. This is the one I saved. 
And Jesus invests in us. He believes in you, even when you, you don't believe in, in yourself. Listen in, in verse 11, chapter 4 of Ephesians. He says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. And he talks about the apostles, who men of, of, of great faith. And not just the apostles that saw and heard Jesus. But these apostles have great faith. A lot of times they started churches. You got the prophets, the evangelists. And the pastors and teachers. You know what they're to do? They're to equip the church for ministry. The members do the ministry in the church. Now, if you're new here, you're probably thinking, that is one lazy pastor. But this may be a new paradigm for you. My ministry is to make sure the church is equipped for ministry, to, to do their ministry. That, that should be how my ministry is measured or how my ministry is evaluated. Now, I know this is a different paradigm for ministry, for many, but the biblical truth is that's my ministry. And your ministry is to do the, the ministry of the church. Jesus has invested in each of us and every single one of us, you're not excluded. You may be hearing lies in your head that go, no, not me. Not, not, not with my past. Not with, not with my present. No, there's no way. This is a totally new thing. The lies in your head are saying you could never do anything. I'm telling you, you were created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And man, and he planned that long before you were born. That's who you are. And he's invested in you. I, I believe this. There are ministries to be born yet at Eastridge that are residing in some of you. He's invested in you. And he invested in us so that we will help build up his church. Jesus has invested in every single one of us so that we will help build up his church. In, in verse 12, it says this. Talking about the, the apostles, the evangelists, the, the, the pastors, and, and the teachers. He says their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the, the body of Christ. Not, not, the, not the bricks and mortar, but the, the people. Listen to what he says about this. This will continue. Now listen to this. Until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son. That we will be mature in the Lord. He's talking about unity. He's talking about maturity. When we're all building up the body of Christ. Measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. And then he says this. Then we'll no longer be like immature children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever. They sound like the truth. Instead, we speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. One word. When, you, when you're doing Bible study and, and, and you're looking at Scripture, a lot of times you want to look for repeated words. I want, I want to tell you a word that you hear repeated here over and over again. It's we. We. We, six times it's we, it's we, it's we, it's, it's we. One of the most crippling factors that prevents today's church from being truly mature is this opposite view of we mindset. It's a me mindset. Man, what's in it for, for, for me? Now, listen, I, I've sat where you sat. I've not always been on this side of the pulpit. And sometimes I can have a, a me mindset versus a we mindset. Man, but when we have a me mindset or an I mindset, man, the church can be, can be hindered. And usually when we have a me mindset or I mindset, I know when I have it. You know why? I'm complaining. Do y'all know any complainers? Don't point them out, please. But here's how it goes, man. When it's a me or my mindset, me or I, my, you know, all myself, all those good things, then all of a sudden I don't like things. Or I'm fed up with things. Or I need something different. Or I'm not being fed. Or I don't like so-and-so and, -so, and I, I, I want this or, or my needs aren't being met. 
But when our focus is on the we, and when my focus is on the we like this, this is what I've noticed. The more people are invested into the body of Christ, man, the more people that are serving, one thing I have noticed about them, their needs are being met. Man, they're, I'm telling, when I say their needs are being met, I've seen physical needs met. I've seen uh, monetary needs met. I've seen emotional needs met. I've seen spiritual needs met. I have seen needs met. And you know what? The church is stronger. It's more unified. It's more mature when that happens. We do live in a very individualistic society. But understand this. We need each other. Even though we disappoint each other. I will disappoint you. I promise you that. That you can count on. We're going to disappoint each other. But here's the truth. We need each other. And you know what? Others need you. Listen, we need each other even when we vote differently, even though when we think differently, man, we need each other. And when we focus on the we, here, here's the result of that. The result is unity. The result is maturity. And the, re- re- the result is growing in love. And in order for that to happen, it takes the whole church to be the church. It, t- it takes the whole church, every member of the body of Christ. In order for us to reach that unity and that maturity and that love, it takes the whole body being the church. In, in verse 4 of Romans chapter 12, Paul writes this. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. So it is with the body, uh, uh, the church body. I want you to understand this. You have a special function. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. And in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. And use your gifts. You have a gift, an ability that is God-given. Man, use your gifts. Serve them in the body. Serve them in the church. And here's the, here's the beauty of it. When we do that, everyone reaps a return. When we all are being the body of Christ, man, everyone reaps the return. Now, again, you may be thinking, man, I'm not needed. And that is a lie. Man, that is a lie from, from the pit of hell. I, I, I don't fit in. Man, that, that is a lie. Listen, one thing I know about all of us. Man, we've all blown it, right? Has anybody here not blown it? Man, has anybody here not sinned? Has anybody in here not, has anybody here not sinned today? Man, one thing we're pretty good at is blowing it. So the one thing is this, we all need a Savior. And the great thing about this is Jesus died for all. And Jesus forgives all. Even though our sins stack up to the heavens, man, Jesus forgives. And I want to tell you something, you belong here. And you are needed. Do not believe that lie. You know what, coming back from from COVID, you know, everybody had the the big shutdown. Let me say something about this. It's been amazing to watch people come back. It's been amazing to, to see. Every week, I feel like I see people that are, that are back for the first time. But coming back from COVID, uh, even though the numbers seem close to what they were before COVID, man, the ministry needs are so much greater. And I, I want to say this, uh, that all over this campus, there are places. I want you to hear me on this. There are places where, where you are needed. Whether you're, you're six years old or, or, or 76 years old, you're needed. Let, let, let me give you some. We have children in the service today. Now, some people bring their children in the service because that's what they want to do. But today we have more children in the service because safety is a value in a land, adventure land, our preschool. And so we have an average ratio of about one adult to about four kids. And so now they had to close the classrooms today. 
because they, they didn't want the kids to be unsafe. Listen, that is a real need in the body of Christ. E-Town, Jamie up here, Jamtastic Jamie. All right, listen, if you know Jamie, she is Jamtastic. Listen, man, Jan Miller and Jamie and other volunteers, students, and adults, man, have poured into those Christ, but that, that's the second greatest need. You know what our third greatest need is? Greeters. Man, just people to stand at the front door who can sincerely smile and let people know that they're glad to see them. Those are just some of the needs when we gather together. But those are real needs in the body of Christ. You have a gift from God. Some of you have the gift of serving. Some of you have the gift of leading. Some of you have the gift of teaching. Some of you have the gift of giving. Whatever it is, man, use those with great faith. Use them well. Man, use them seriously and use them gladly. Because Jesus invested in you, and he believes there's a great return in you. Listen, last week we, we had a blockage. Um, this is going to get gross, but we had a sewage blockage during first service in E-Town. Okay? Sewage blockage. All right? I didn't know about it. Do y'all remember? If y'all remember the end of first service, uh, how, how I butchered that five-word sentence? I had a note handed to me. I had no context. But it turned out the sewage was coming up out of the floor caps in the E-Town. Yeah, yeah. You won't forget this message, will you? We had somebody back from the very first time. It's been a couple of years since they've been here because of COVID. They skipped out of the service and helped clean that up. We had two other members back there helping to clean that. And they were doing it gladly. They were gagging. But they did it gladly. I'm going to tell you something. You know who's richer for that? Well, we all are. Because our kids are back in there again. Listen. And that's the body of Christ. Being the body of Christ. When we are invested, understand this. When all of us are invested and the church grows. And I'm not just saying numerically. I'm talking about we grow in unity, we grow in maturity, and we, we grow in love. Man, when everybody's invested, in, in verse 16, I'm sorry, verse 11, he says, he says that he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. Listen to what God's doing. Isn't, isn't this amazing? All these different personalities, all these different gifts, all these different talents, uh, talents is and experience, I'm jamtastic. All these different talents, all these different experiences, he makes the body fit together perfectly. And listen to what he says. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. As each part does its own, as you and I perform the ministry, whether it's serving or, or leading, whatever it may be, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. This coming Friday night, you had the ladies ministry happening. And you know what? You got a group of ladies. I, I don't know how many people are on the leadership team, five or six, something like that. And they're going to come and they're going to set up tables and chairs and, and they're going to provide desserts. Praise God for that. I hope my wife brings me back a plate. Leadership team, I hope you heard that. And... Um, but let me tell you what's going to happen. They're going to create an environment where other ladies can get connected and other ladies can be ministered to and other ladies can grow. And let me tell you who this is going to benefit, not just the ladies that show up in that atrium. It's going to benefit the whole church. The whole church is going to be stronger. The whole church is going to be more loving. The whole church is going to grow because of that. He says as each part does its special work and it helps the other parts grow. When those ladies gather, it helps the other parts grow. When the people in the sound booth are, are working hard and they're volunteering and using their gifts or talents or abilities and whatever it may be, the whole church grows. When people serve in adventure land, listen, it says the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love as each part does its special work. <laughs> 
When people serve in student ministry, it's so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. When people serve in children's ministry, it's so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. When people serve as greeters, it's so that the whole body is full and healthy and growing and full of love. When they serve as small group leaders, it's so the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. When they serve as ushers, it's so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. When they serve as celebrate recovery, it's so that the whole body is healthy and and loving and full of love is so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love when you and I serve no matter where it may be it is so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love so the mindset must be this every member is a minister every member is a minister and if you're a member of, of East Ridge Community Church, if you're a member of any church, if you're joining us online and you, you go to church somewhere else, every member is a member. I, I commission you now. Man, serve. You've got the gifts. You've got the spirit. You've got the talents. You've got the abilities. Man, serve. Because every member is a minister. Now, I do believe this. I believe you have a primary ministry. And I believe you have a secondary ministry. Let's start with Let's go with the second first. That's going to blow some of your minds to do that. But the second one, let's begin there. That's just wherever you're needed. Hopefully it won't be with sewage again. But just serve wherever there's a need. Then you also have a primary ministry. And this is something that God has uniquely shaped you for. Now, I, I want to walk through this. This is an acronym we used a long time ago, and we've been using it, uh, you know, off and on in the past. But we have this tool online, and it's called freeshapetest.com. But let me, just, let me just walk you through it. When you came to faith in Christ, you were given a spiritual gift, maybe one, two, three. I don't know. That's not my call. But you have at least one. You have at least one spiritual gift to be invested into the body of Christ. Because every member is a minister. Now, I don't know what it is. But also, too, you have a unique heart. Some of you love preschoolers. How many of you do not? Don't raise your hand. For some of you, that it would be drudgery. Okay? But you have a certain heart for people. Maybe people groups or, or issues that other people don't have. Praise God that he's wired you that way. You have abilities. You have abilities that other people don't have. Maybe it's with, with technical stuff. Maybe it's with mechanical stuff. Maybe it's people skills. But you have abilities that other people don't have. And then you have a personality. And I know there's all types of personality tests. I know all about that. But you have a personality that's unique to you as well. And then you have experiences. You got educational experiences, you got painful experiences, you got job experiences, you got other ministry experiences, you've had some spiritual experiences. Again, that makes you uniquely you. I want to challenge you to do something. And serve anywhere as far as where you're needed. But also discover how God has uniquely shaped you. And go to this free shapetest.com. We have a gentleman in the church who's in his, in his 60s. He, he contacted me, I think it was a week before last. And he said, hey, I, I, I want to serve. And I pointed him to, to the shape test. And he's already filled it out. And we're going to sit down and walk through it together. And see how God has uniquely shaped him. So I tell you that story for two reasons. One, you're never too old. I was reading in the Psalms just this, this past week. That even in my old age, God still produces fruit, the writer wrote. Man, if you are breathing, you are needed. If you are breathing, you can still produce fruit for the kingdom of God. And here's the impact. Man, the, the impact of the church in this community is directly proportional to the investment of each member serving. I, I want you to hear that. Man, the, the, the impact is of, of, the, of this church is directly proportional to the number of members who view themselves as ministers. 
There's a direct proportion to that. But listen, God is bringing people every week, both services, online. And you know what? They need to be ministered to. And guess who God's plan is? You. You, the members, are the ministers of Eastridge. And here's the result. A serving church will be a healthy church. It'll be unified. It'll be loving. And it'll be mature. I want to say that one more time. A man, a serving church is a unified, loving, and mature church. So what, what, do, you, what do we do? Man, I, I want you to invest now, many of you are doing that, so let me say this. Thank you. But maybe you're not invested yet. Maybe, maybe you're not in a ministry yet. Hey, I, you know what? There's going to be some tables out here. And this is not a sales pitch, but it's, I'm going to tell you something. This is your identity. Man, you are a servant of Jesus Christ. You were created to do ministry. And I don't want you to come to the end of your life and realize, man, I missed my calling. Listen, our calling is this. It's to the kingdom of God, seeking first his kingdom and serving the king of kings in his church by serving one another. And here's the result. So the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That'll be the result. Don't buy the lie that you're not needed. Don't buy the lie that somebody else will do it. Don't buy the lie that you're not valuable. You're invaluable. Now, let's be invested. Father God, I want to thank you. Lord, um, you see things in us that we can't see. Father, you, you speak over us, God, when our mind is full of lies. Father, your word says that you take pleasure over everything that you've created. So God, you have taken pleasure over us. And God, you believe that we are a sound investment. That you would give us your gifts and abilities, Father. All these experiences and, Father, even the personality that we have and the heart that we have. Father, I pray that we'd be a church. Lord, that would just offer all that to you. And I say, Lord, I'm, I'm your minister. Father, I'm your minister. And, Father, you would do with me and Father, you do with us all that you have planned to do. So Father, you've taught us to pray, Lord. You told us to pray, Father, that your kingdom would come. And Lord, I, I do pray that. But you also, Father, prayed, you, you taught us to pray that your will would be done. And Lord, I, I pray this, Lord, and whenever we say your will be done, Father, your spirit will remind us that we we are servants of your will. We are the hands and feet of your will being done in the lives of so many, but especially here in the lives of the church that you've placed us in. So, Father, I thank you. And Lord, I pray your will be done. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So it's been great being together. I don't hear any music, so I got a feeling we still have technical issues. <laughs> so anyway, y'all have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Hey, check out the tables, and also, too, there's a QR code. You can go to our website, check out places to serve.